So, um, a few disclaimers before we start. The first thing is uh, this session will talk a bit about discrimination and some topics that might not be very nice and comfortable to talk about. So, yes, some people might not be feeling super comfortable about it. The other thing is I'm not a code of conduct specialist. There are people in communities that are very much into codes of conduct. Uh, I, I'm not one of those people. Uh, but somehow I became interested about this topic and here I am. Um, so yeah, why are we having this conversation about codes of conduct? So it all started um, a few months ago with the Portuguese Ubuntu community. We have a Telegram channel, which is pretty open and anyone can join, which is pretty cool. And someone joined uh, and we welcomed that person as we welcome pretty much anyone that joins that channel. And then things started to go a bit off track. Uh, so there was this one specific person who is new to the community. And... Uh, and, um, and yeah, so we welcomed that person. And that person started going a bit off track. Started sharing a lot of things that are a bit unusual to be shared on the channel, started fueling discussions that weren't very nice, and uh, people started to get a bit upset about that. And people started saying, look, please don't share th those type of, th type of things here in the channel. You can have those conversations somewhere else. Um, and then one day, things uh, hit the fan, and uh, and yeah, so that person shared something from Bar Breitbart. I don't know if you're aware of what Breitbart is. It's a website that is associated with alt-right propaganda and fake news and misinformation. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty uh, controversial website, to say the least. And one of the members who had been there for years and years and years uh, snapped. And was proper rude uh, and basically said that's it enough is enough not dealing with any of this uh, this and that but using uh, not very nice words of course and then he got told off so we came to the situation where someone was doing a lot of inappropriate things for a continuous amount of time being told off uh, you know numerous times in a row, ignoring all those calls, and then someone snapped, and that person who snapped got told off because, well, he can't be rude on the channel. It's in our code of conduct. And I thought, well, this doesn't feel right. And uh, so uh, I asked other, I'm one of the moderators of the channel, uh, but I asked some older moderators, like, all right, so, how is our co code of conduct? What is it? Where is it? Where can I read it? And I don't know if you have read Ubuntu's code of conduct. I hadn't read it until that specific point. And I think codes of conduct are a bit like insurance. You don't know, like you don't really need one until you actually do. And uh, yeah, I don't know who said this. I don't think it was me. This popped in my head, but I, I want to give the appropriate quote. Um, and yeah, so I went and read Ubuntu's Code of Conduct. And what I found was not very nice. So Ubuntu is supposed to give access uh, to any people, to technology, to is supposed to be a very open community and whatnot. But then when you read the Code of Conduct, it's none of those things. So first things first, it's very work-centric. If you read the code of conduct of Ubuntu, if you don't know that Ubuntu has a community, it's like you're just reading guidelines on how you should behave while you submit your code. Uh, so for me, that was all like immediately uh, a point that was like, well, but this is supposed to be a community and the community is a lot more than just writing code or submitting work to uh, Ubuntu products. 
there's actually no single mention to things like discrimination or inclusivity. These words or any derivatives of these words do not appear in Ubuntu's code of conduct. Um, there is a lot of, uh, there are quite a few items on the code of conduct that are about being respectful. But, well, the, the starting situation of this, you had someone who was, well, maybe not being respectful because people continuously asked for, for him not to share those things. But, you know, being respectful is not enough. You can actually be very mean towards someone and you're still not being necessarily rude or uh, inappropriate. And so, like, the word respectful is really vague for me. And I found it very weird that uh, most of the, the items on Ubuntu's code of conduct that were about, um, you know, uh, being nice to one another and whatnot, they mentioned being respectful. So there's no thing about discrimination or being inclusive, but you have to be respectful. Then there's a whole thing about collaboration versus participation. Um, most of Ubuntu's code of conduct uh, refers being collaborative and not uh, enable, enabling participation. And technically, I can be collaborative uh, with someone by not doing anything. My dad, um, when I was a kid, he had this thing, like, if you're not helping out, just move out of the way. And yeah, you can be, you can collaborate with someone by just not being there. You're not messing, uh, you, you're not uh, putting yourself in the way, you're not disturbing whatever they're doing, whether it's good or not, it doesn't matter. So this, this duality between uh, collaboration and participation for me is also a key point of uh, the things that are a bit off about Ubuntu's code of conduct. And then this is the, 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 uh, the other thing, which is responsibility versus accountability. It talks a lot about people being responsible for their actions, but it doesn't, it doesn't say anything about being accountable for their actions, which is a lot different. Me being responsible for what I say is that, yes, I said that, it's fine. But being accountable is allowing someone else to tell me, you said this wrong and you know, you should say something else or do in a better way. The thing about discrimination and inclusivity uh, and what I find really bad about not being there is because it fuels two things. One is confirmation bias. Uh, confirmation bias is when you have a stereotype. So let's say, um, a stereotype can be uh, women are not good with technology, okay? And then the first time there's a woman in the group and she asks about something technical, you're thinking, ah, oh, I knew it, she's a woman, doesn't know anything about technology. So that's confirmation bias. So you have an established prejudice and then whenever you get a confirmation by your experience, you believe you are correct. Um, this is sort of easy to tell, most of us will have prejudices against various things. Uh, but if you think deep down, you can probably tell what sort of biases you have. You may think women are not very good with technology. You may think uh, some nationalities are more prone to certain um, behaviors, etc., etc. You may think that older people are also not very good with technology because they're old and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing, and this is like, for me, uh, the most hard to challenge is implicit bias. So implicit bias is prejudices that we have that are not aware of. And I've put that website there. If you wanna test some of your implicit bias, go to that website. Uh, there's lots of topics that you can test yourself on uh, from, from uh, you know, the gender bias uh, in tech. Uh, so if you believe that men or women are more prone to being technical people or not, to actually health issues. So um, you might consider that certain groups of people are more prone to have certain diseases, 
etc., or certain health behaviors, etc., etc., etc. And um, I did this as um, a part of the Mozilla Open Leadership training uh, a couple of years ago, and I was really surprised because I consider myself uh, very non-biased, and I do have some imp implicit biases. So, um, yeah, the, the tests are in many languages, and you, ha you can test yourself in a bunch of categories. Um, I'm not sure if it's mobile friendly, but if you have a laptop, just try it at home. It's, it's really, really cool. And you'll find a lot about yourselves and also about different types of biases, because I think we're very used to hearing about uh, gender biases or uh, things like racism and xenophobia and whatnot, but there's a lot of prejudice that goes way beyond these categories, and you can test yourself. So uh, I found out that I had a little bias into thinking that men are a bit more inclined to technology than women, which is kind of ironic because I'm a woman and I really love technology. I'm very much into uh, a bunch of open source communities. I'm doing a PhD in open source. So um, it was kind of shocking that I had this bias. Uh, but the fact that we don't have discrimination and inclusivity in the code of conduct actually fuels biases by not blocking them uh, straight on. Then there is this thing, which is uh, probably my least favorite part of the whole con code of conduct. And it's a chapter called Open Meritocracy. Now, meritocracy is a bit of a touchy subject, but um, yeah, basically it says that any contributors who demonstrates the required capacity and competence can be part of the community. Capacity and competence uh, are things that I have only heard in uh, very professional environments. This is not community friendly. Uh, you can be part of a community without necessarily being competent. You have to be friendly, you have to be respectful, you have to engage in a healthy manner with the other members of the community. Uh, I, I wouldn't consider that uh, something that you would have to test on competence, for instance. Um, and yeah, and then there's the whole accountability versus responsibility thing, which uh, really, if, if people are not accountable for their behaviors, then if they do something wrong, they just uh, assume they can do it over and over again. And that was a bit what happened uh, with that person on the Telegram group. Um, because we actually had no way of making him accountable. There were no uh, mechanisms in place uh, that would let us uh, actually say, if you continue to do this, if you continue to do all these things that we've continuously asked you not to do, uh, we will kick you out of the, the room chat or, you know, you'll be banned from the community, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, he did get kicked out of the, the room chat and it was a first. Uh, Ubuntu community is, uh, I, I don't know how long it's been running for. It's been running for a long time. The Portuguese um, group actually has more than, there are more than a hundred members of the that chat room and it was the first person that got banned for doing something other than you know the usual telegram bots that appear and spam you and do all those things those get banned immediately as well but it was the actually the first person where we got to this point like we have to do something about us and the only thing that we can do given uh the community and our tools and our mechanisms is we will kick him out but there was actually nothing in our code of conduct that allowed that to happen. So it was like really a community decision beyond the sphere of the code of conduct, which is there in place, mainly to protect its members. However, uh, I have to say that the Portuguese Ubuntu community is actually a very healthy place. And uh, one of the reasons why I was so infuriated and when to read uh, code of conduct and like going to really this vortex of, of things that should be common sense but really are not, um, was the fact that I feel very safe and very happy within the Ubuntu communi the community. And one of the reasons why I feel that 
is because it's inclusive way past the technical part. Most of the people are not necessarily developers. Some of them are. Some of them work in other areas of IT. Some of them don't do any of those things. Uh, I have worked in IT, but I don't work anymore. We have people who are retired and just love Ubuntu so much that they traveled Sindra for a whole week and now have the flu because they just love being part of the community. And, and, and yeah, like the, what makes Ubuntu special is what goes beyond the code. Of course, Ubuntu is, uh, a, well, it is a software product and there is a whole economy around it and I'm, I don't want to devalue that. It, that is important, the business side of Ubuntu. But this is UbuCon, it's about the community. Um, and yeah, our community is very happy. And I'm very <laughs> happy to say that uh, we, we hang out every month. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I, I can't see Tiago, but yeah, Tiago has the other Tiago. Uh, <laughs> Tiago has been religiously organizing uh, meetups every month for the last five years that takes a huge effort. Uh, and sometimes there are 12 people around the table. Sometimes there are three people around the table. But they go, and we go. Um, I made friends. We went abroad. We went to FOSDEM together. I made friends to go to FOSDEM. I met a friend at FOSDEM. And I met a bunch of people who would probably not be in my life if uh, I wasn't part of this community. Um, we have a really varied community that um, UbuCon EU drawing is a guy is from a guy who is part of our community Sally couldn't be here uh, but he does these really cool drawings and I, I really wanted to to bring them because I find them really really cool um, there's the Ubuntu podcast which is really uh, just a product of passion and dedication towards the community like no one is paying them to do that and they just keep doing it for how long Diogo two years two years now and uh and yeah and it brings new people to the community and it's actually a very very safe and inclusive space but I think it's time that we maybe uh address the code of conduct issue because it's really not keeping anyone safe and if something serious happened, like, say, um, you know, people being racist towards each, each other, uh, or um, I'm thinking serious things like sexual harassment or whatnot, those things are just covered by the be respectful line. And I mean, that's, that's not really any decent protection. So... Maybe it's time that we think about um, what we can do to change that code of conduct and making it more inclusive and more uh, accountable. So this is it. If you have any questions and if you ha want, want to share any experiences from your own community, uh, please do so. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. No? Oh, there's one. <laughs> I, I have an honest question uh, about which I never did any kind of research, but, I, but I'm curious. I didn't study this. Uh, without bias, are men more inclined to technology or not? Or is it just a matter of circumstance or historical? I have no idea about the answer, but maybe if you research into it, you have an opinion. Thank you. Uh, I think... That is a, there are various lines. Um, it's mainly, and, and the, the situation is a lot different depending on the countries, for starters. So uh, I think in the West, and I'm, I'm going to focus on the West because it's not like this everywhere, but I'm going to focus in our westernized world. So in Europe and in the US, it's, it's mostly uh, a cultural thing. Um, and, uh, for instance, women have been part of uh, coding and programming uh, and uh, computer science very, very early on. 
and they were in fact uh, pioneers of the field, but they were uh, progressively pushed away from the field. And there's a, I think there's a, a more uh, systemic uh, situation that does not really, um, it's not very friendly towards women. And then it becomes like, at this point, I think it's a bit of a snowball. Like there aren't many women in the field, but that also detracts other women from being in the field. And this is also, um, I think it's a bit easy to explain, say, if I'm a woman and I go into a room that is just full of men, it's not a safe space for me. And so if I go into a community and I don't see other women, I will immediately feel intimidated. And it's not because men are all evil. I know they're not. But uh, there is this... There is a lot of uh, uh, insecurities regarding men, women, and yeah, I don't think men feel this. If, if, if a man walks into a room full of women, he will not feel unsafe. Um, <laughs> he might feel nervous, but not necessarily unsafe, uh, which is, which is a, a lot different. Um, and, uh, but I think it's a, it's a, 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 it's a cultural issue. And in Portugal, we do have uh, very high ratings of women in STEM. Uh, they are the highest of the westernized countries. But in computer science specifically, and in some subjects, I think in mechanics and think in electro electronics, it's still very low in comparison. I don't, th I don't think it's necessarily uh, that uh, women are less interested. But they are pushed away from very early on because it's a boys thing. Because if you play with computers, like you're uh, uh, Maria Rapasha. <laughs> I, I don't remember the name in English. Tomboy, yes. Uh, so very early on, uh, it, it, it expresses itself as a cultural issue, at least in Western societies. You start from the bottom. You have to start with if your a five-year-old girl says, I want to code or I want to play with machines and robots and whatnot, you teach her without having the stigma of, oh, that's a boy's thing. And uh, if when you get to later stages of education and she wants to continue study that, don't disencourage her by saying, oh, but you're going to be the only girl in the class. I've heard that. Uh, I mean, I studied languages and, and, and human sciences, but um, if I had followed a different path, I would have gone the physics way. And the physics class was just guys. And for me, it was okay because I was used to being a tomboy. But, uh, you know, it can be very... Uh, um, prejudicial if, if you are... Uh, if you're trying to go that way, but you never get the encouragement you need. Uh, just to reinforce what you said, um, I've 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 been on on the the first week of a, a STEM uh, college, uh, a reference in Portugal, Instituto Superior Técnico, in the last few years, and I've seen, especially last year a lot of girls entering mechanics and IT. It is changing. Like, a lot. It's changing. Uh, it starts from the bottom, but also with positive examples. Um, with codes of conduct, obviously, but, but, but also with positive examples being shown on, on media, being shown on, on, on television. Mainly, it's, it's still important. We live in the di digital age, but television is, is still very important. Uh, and um, w sometimes it's, um, and here in Portugal, you can notice that a lot. It's still, oh, you're a woman, you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be saying that. I don't know how it is in other countries, but in Portugal, there's still a lot of prejudice. And, and when we when we tell that uh, those people are, are being prejudicial, those people, oh no, no, I'm just stating a fact. I'm just stating what other you people. You don't see women anywhere. Yes, you don't see women so they don't doing like that. It. Yes. yes, but 
uh, they're doing it. They're doing that. They're not uh, doing the, the positive reinforcement that we need. It just uh, just say like, uh, you want to do something, do it. I don't care, do it. <laughs> just be happy. And I'm saying this with a very hang angry voice, but it's it's uh, it's what needs to be said. So um, just to add a little bit more to the discussion, uh, it is a fact that the Ubuntu Code of Conduct uh, it's a big, bit thin. Uh, and it is so much that um, the community decided that this was too little and uh, added a different document, which is a, a diversity statement, which uh, sh says that uh, reinforces a bit that the protection for uh, diversity. However, it also, uh, as the code of conduct, also only speaks of responsibility and not uh, uh, of accountability. And, and also does not mention what um, can happen when there is a conflict. However, there are documents on the Ubuntu wiki uh, regarding how to deal with conflict. So Those should be... Um, yeah, there, there should uh, this <laughs> all this should be included on the yeah, code yeah. of conduct and, and, and made a, a, a solid document. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a comment, not uh, not so much a question. But I hope you will comment on my comment in the end. Um, regar regarding that uh, that Telegram issue. Um, um, I believe that uh, uh, we good guys that have a sense of uh, a common sense uh, that uh, everybody should have, uh, we have, uh, I believe uh, we have a, a responsibility um, that it's, uh, um, it's not uh, um, very fair because uh, as we are, uh, uh, as we intend to, to do uh, the things well done, uh, we cannot um, uh, swear uh, or, or talk to uh, talk to that guy uh, badly in in the in the, the open group. Uh, so it, it's it, it's not that easy because um, a guy that uh, it's not very well intended can do whatever he wants. He doesn't have the, that responsibility, or he doesn't feel that responsibility, and so. Um, uh, what do you think on the, the position uh, of the, the good guys that have to do the things well, that have to, to be careful what they say, uh, uh, even if the, the other guy is completely insane and, uh, and the disrespect uh, everyone? Um, yeah, that's it. I, th I think in the end, uh, the decision to ban him was the right one. Um, I, I mean, it's not that I, I think everybody tried or at least most of the members uh, of at least the, the ones that participate more often, they tried to address the issue in various forms from uh, asking, please, can you not post this type of things in the forum? Please, can you not say those things because they're racist to uh, let's just ignore him and we keep talking ourselves and he's talking there, but it's still in the same chat room. Um, I think it's really hard to be a moderator and, uh, you know, to keep level-headed. And actually the person that snapped, I don't think he's a moderator, um, but he's, he's, he was a, a member of the, the, the community for many, many years. And like the conversation kept coming and going and coming and going. And this lasted weeks, months actually. And, and one day he just snapped. Of course, he shouldn't have snapped. But at the same time, it's really unfair that he was the one that got told off. Because, like, it had been asked thousands of times, can you please not share this type of content here? Can you please not have these type of statements here? Because we are inclusive and you're just being racist. Um, and, and actually, he started harassing people one to one, uh, like you know, opening private chat rooms with specific members, uh, which for me is insane. Uh, and so, 
I think it's really challenging if you're the moderator to keep your head level and to make sure that you stay calm and have the appropriate reaction. But that's one of the good things of the, the you know, the internet and, you know, you're writing something. It gives you time to think. So if we were on a face-to-face -face situation, maybe it would be a lot harsher. But you, you, when you grab your phone and you look at something, you, you can have at least a few seconds to think what you're writing, what you're typing, how you are, how you, you are saying what you want to say because how you talk to people is m almost more important than what you, than, yeah. How you say things is more important than uh, what you're trying to say. Um, and, and yeah, I think that's one of the advantages of the internet. It's like it gives you time to, <sighs> but uh, it's, it's really challenging. But it, of course, it's, if you're a, an admin of the channel, if you're a moderator, if you're a community manager, it is part of your job even if it's not on a professional manner, uh, to make sure things run smoothly. And you have to be, it's a bit like parenting. You have to be the role model or you have to try to be the role model that you want your kids to, you know. Because if you have a moderator that is just swearing and shouting at people and calling them names, then that person shouldn't be a moderator of anything. <laughs> and let me add that the, the, the moderator's reaction, I think it was more than perfect because they didn't just kick the, that guy. They 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 tried to to tell them, to tell him what's wrong and tell him correctly and tell me tell him many times and uh, it was a, a perfect reaction in my opinion. So that's good. To Thanks, know. moderators. <laughs> okay, anyone? It's beer time. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your presence and so.